two, one. What's up, buddy? What's up, Noah? So, uh, <laughs> for everyone that is listening on Spotify, we are not in the studio today. I decided to drive down to uh, to Las Cruces to visit a buddy of mine. Dude, how long have we fucking known each other? So I was a rat. <laughs> You're kind of a dick. I didn't really know you. Um, I want to say like 2016, probably we became friends. Jesus Christ. Well, not even friends, bro. Like we knew about each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just started getting to know each other and stuff. Well, because you started NIMI as a sophomore in high school, right? Yeah. A sophomore right. in high school. Yeah. Okay. 2015. 20, so you you started out as a sophomore when I just started college. For real? Yeah. Because if you started... I thought you were a senior, if you're man. If your rat year was 2015... Oh, yeah, because you were a troop commander, yeah. huh? You were, like, alpha? I think Alpha I, troop commander. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember That's now. Crazy. There you go. Ah shit. Ah shit. Yeah, dude. So, fucking. Yeah. So we we became friends and like knew each other in like 2016. So that's like what six years ago. Jesus Christ. That's yeah, a long. Man. That's a long fucking time. It's been a while. So how have you been? Like, so you're here. Okay. So before we even talk about you going to college and Las Cruces and all that stuff. I want to figure out why you started going to Nimi in the first place. Because so you're not from America, bro. Yeah. You're from Mexico. So what part of Mexico are you from? I'm from Cabo, bro. Okay. So did, like, your family have a history at Nimi? Do you have, like, a military background? So, no, not my family. But, like, um, well, first, you have to know that education in Mexico is kind of shit. Like, <laughs> for the most part, in most places, it's pretty much shit, you know? And not only that, but, like, People in, like, high school and, like, college and stuff, they have pretty bad habits, bro. Like, a lot of partying, a lot of going out, a lot of, you know, doing drugs, that type of shit. So, essentially, Nimi just seemed like a really good option for basically anyone, bro. Anyone who could afford it, I guess. And my family didn't, like, I never had family that went to Nimi, like, direct family. But family, friends went there. And, you know, it's like my mom knew other moms who had kids who went there and shit. Um, I'm sure you even know some of them. Um, like, yeah, just people from all over Mexico that went to Nimi and, like, my mom knew about it. And, um, yeah, that's how I ended up with the idea, man. And I was just like, sure, why not? Well, it's funny. It's funny that's how it happened. Because yeah. now that you're in the back end of it. And I was telling fucking Justin this last night, which is crazy because you live in a house where it's when we went both went to Nimi with. So there's two Nimi alum in the house, yeah. right? Like yeah, there no used matter, to be four. And the, okay, my point exactly. Yeah. No matter where you go after you leave Nimi, you're always going to fucking find Dude, a long time. It's yeah. like like so yeah, I came I came into town last night and I only expected to see like you and uh Justin. But then I see, like, what, fucking two other people that I went to Nimi with that I would have gone with or known or whatever. And then, because I hadn't seen them since I was at the school. And then there were, because they were younger, they obviously knew the undergrads that I never knew. And they were here. So it, it was like four generations of Nimi last night. All in a fucking hot tub. <laughs> Which is so fucking weird. So you go to Nimi and you start in 2015. Uh, what was that like coming from? So you went to, to your freshman year of high school at Mexico. You you moved to America temporarily, and is at the time you think it's just temporary, right? Yeah, I don't think. Do you ever have plans of like permanently living in the states? Um, hopefully, dude. Like, well, at the time, did you think about that? Um, not really. It wasn't even in my mind. It wasn't in my mind. Yeah. But uh, it's always been like my mom's plan to like help me out she yeah. like basically my whole family bro like they want to get the kids out of mexico because mexico is kind of like slowly going to shit yeah so it's always been like the best case scenario where you end up in the states you know that's kind of so, why so and i want to get into that i want to get into that later because that's i'm glad you're saying that because a lot of people in this country right now it's like they, they talk a lot of shit but they're not going to do anything about it 
know what I mean? Like, they're like, yeah, I'm going to leave. Fuck this place. Fuck yeah. Trump. Fuck, yeah. Even, like, fuck Biden. Yeah. I'm going to leave, but that's a bunch of nonsense. You, where are you going to go? Yeah. Like, let's be real. Like, it, it's not great here right now, but where are you going to go? Exactly. So. Doesn't so you, get much better. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you, at the time, you think it's temporary. You, uh, you start out as a sophomore in high school. You're, what, 15 years old? Yeah, I was 15, dude. So. How like how was that transition for you? Because dude, you, was, English isn't your first language. Yeah. How much English did you know? Like day one at Nimi, how much English? I did knew you know? my fair share, bro. Honestly, because when I was younger, when I was in like fifth or sixth grade, like dude, okay, living in Cabo, dude, you know that Cabo's like that's a, a garbage truck you hear in the background because <laughs> we are outside, ladies and gentlemen. All right, continue. It's Friday, man. They always do this on Fridays. Um, yeah, dude. So like. You have to know living in Cabo, you deal with, like, a bunch of tourists. You know, people in Cabo just live off of tourism, like, for the most part, right? So, in every school in Cabo, they teach, like, a very decent level of English. So, that, like, that really helped. And then when I was, like, on fifth or sixth grade, I can't, maybe even fourth grade, I can't remember. I went to Canada, bro. I went to Canada for a whole summer, uh, St. Michael's University School. Keep talking, I'm just gonna check camera. Yeah. Um, and I went there. My mom sent me there basically so I would, you know, develop a better English, like um, better pronunciation and stuff like that. Um, and I always get that from people when they hear me talk and stuff. They're like, well, most people say that they can't even tell that I'm Mexican. Some people can, some people can't, but a lot of people are kind of surprised when I tell them I'm Mexican. Like, English isn't my first language, you know? So, yeah, going to Canada helped me a lot. And when I got to Nimi, I was already pretty good, I guess. Pretty good at speaking English. Um, I had not been, like, continuously at a place where I had to speak English the whole time. So, obviously, my four years at Nimi definitely helped a lot. Yeah. So, you so what year did you go to Canada again? Like, how old were you? Dude, I was young, bro. I was fucking... I must have been like 12 or 13 or something, maybe even younger than that, bro. I can't tell you, but like... So maybe you weren't like old enough to really think about it at the time, but looking back, how would you compare... Because you're only there for a summer, you said. Yeah. How would you compare the education style of Canada to, you know, Mexico or America? Is there any major differences? Well, to Mexico, yeah, bro. Mexico, It's pretty similar to here, but to Mexico, it's just... It's kind of the same here in Canada, but in Mexico, it's just different, bro. Because, dude, in Mexico, like, imagine this, bro. Like, you're in high school in Mexico or, like, uh, what is it, 7th, 8th, ninth grade? What do you call that? Yeah, middle school. That's middle school? Well, 7th, 6th, 7th, 8th is uh, middle school. 7th, 8th, and ninth. And not, see, ninth grade here is high school. That's freshman okay. year high school. Yeah, well, okay, those years in Mexico, bro, you walk up into a classroom and you and your classmates, bro, you little shits, like, you're all there, you're sitting down. It's like, dude, it's like South Park. Literally. It's like South Park. Like, you're just making fun of the teacher. You're not paying attention. Well, there's a lot of schools here in America like that, so. Well, yeah, but that, that's, mainly, that's mainly public schools, right? Right. Like, in Mexico, even the private schools are like that. No, you know? no I went to private school my whole life in yeah. Mexico. And all of it was like that, dude. Like, um, not to say that you didn't learn anything. Uh, but you definitely learn a lot less than if you went to school here in America, you know? Because, like I said, it's just, like, dude, everyone's fucking around. Uh, people are fucking off. They're just hanging out outside the classroom while the teacher's trying to give class. The other kids inside are just being a fucking menace. Like, they're being menaces, bro. <laughs> Seriously. Like, if, if, like, I don't know how common this is in America, but in Mexico, if you and your classmates want to get a teacher fired, you can do that within a week. Like, you all get together, and you get fired. I'm proud to announce that the podcast is now officially sponsored by the fine people over at Chop Chili Company. Guys, this is some of the best chili you can get here in the state of New Mexico, and they are online as well as in stores. They can be found at Smith's, Albertson's, Sprouts, John Brooks, and Lowe's Corner Market. They have three amazing flavors that you see here, and they also have frozen green chili that you can get online. Go on over to the website, chopchilico.com, and get yourself some amazing chili today. But Literally, that was like, bro. I remember being a kid and in elementary school, and, and we never fucked with the, with the main teachers because we either liked them or they were just dicks, <coughs> right? They were just fucking assholes. <coughs> um, or 
whenever we get like a uh, a substitute teacher in, it's like, hey, let's make this chick cry. <laughs> let's fuck with the substitute, bro. That's what you do. Because <laughs> you're little fucking elementary school kids. You don't know any better. He just knows this is a power of authority and you have a little bit of leeway. Yeah. You're going to take it. And But that's interesting that it's kind of sad. It's that sad, bro. It it's, happens it's in sad, private dude. schools. And and like, it's like, it was, we're supposed to be rigorous. Yeah, exactly. And I go to Nimi, bro, and it's like this completely different place where like the teachers have all this power over you, bro. Like they can they can fuck up your life at Nimi, bro. Oh yeah. So we've got a we've got the, the, the viewership has grown a little bit. So when we talk about Nimi, it's a uh, boarding military school down in Roswell, New Mexico. And the idea it's college prep and it gets you off to fucking college and stuff like that and yeah it's funny it's a military school but only like i think 14 percent people go out of the military out of that place i have no idea which is crazy um so yeah it's a very strict place at least when we went there it's not a reform school yeah <laughs> it's not a reform school yeah it's um it's funny though because like i remember it's funny you say that because i my rat year my very first year there we had this kid his name was michael uh oh safford i think stafford safford something like that and he was sent there on a court order. And I heard of those kids. Yeah, he got sent there on a court. Well, nowadays, he was one of the last ones, dude. Because nowadays, they There's don't even. There's been others. They, really? Yeah, recently. Oh, okay. Well, they, because when I remember when I when I went back as a, because I went back to the school to work in the admissions office, they had changed the policy. Yeah. They straight up do not admit those kids. Like, that was a policy for everybody. I guess they changed it. Yeah, I have a, I have a younger cousin who went there who recently graduated, and he was in the baseball team with one of those kids, bro. And the kid was a fucking menace, too, well, there you, you know? Like, well, there you go, right? And, yeah, the motherfucker didn't last longer than, like, a semester, I think. But yeah. it's not a reform school. It's very meant for people who actually want to be there and learn. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But the, my point in bringing all that up is it's um, it's structured. Yeah. It's very rigorous, at least when we went there. And um, so I'd imagine that was a bit of a culture shock going from Mexico to... Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. it wasn't, like, it's not like it was hard to adapt because I can adapt pretty easily to things like that. Like, I'm just good at, you know, doing what I'm told, honestly. So it wasn't, like, hard for me to follow the rules or anything, but it was very interesting to see how, you know, the shit that I'd witnessed before in Mexico, it didn't fly there, bro. It did not fly at Nimi. None of it. You couldn't be laughing at the teacher. If, if the teacher told you to shut up, you had to shut up. Yeah. Or else you'd end up marching for hours in the weekend, bro. <laughs> Who wanted that? You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. So when you were in school in Mexico, did you, or was it like growing up in Mexico? Because there's always that stigma. It's like Mexico's violent. It's got a bunch of cartels. And yeah. Now, you live in Cabo, which you're right. That's more of a touristy uh, city. Yeah. But did you ever run into anything like that? Did you ever experience stuff like that? Mm, not in Cabo, bro. They're, they, it's like the tourist places are for the most part, the safer areas. Yeah. So it, I never got to see anything. I remember there was one time, <laughs> there was one time where I didn't see it, but it was a big fucking deal where in Cabo, there's like these bridges for like, um, just bridges on the road, bro, basically. And there was like three of them and they hung people from the bridges because there was some shit going on with the cartel and the plazas and the fucking yeah. change of, whatever like they want to take the plaza and shit some shit like that i don't know so from what i remember reading about that was they had uh there was a cartel war going on because like what i've heard is that the cartels protect the tourist places and the tourist place like the companies pay off the cartels i have no yeah idea, it's a bro. whole like uh, sub economy of, like, of <laughs> protection right because no as you know the police don't do shit so the mexican police don't do shit so there was, like, a cartel war going on, and they'd kill a couple of their guys, like, on each side. And as a signal to the other cartel, they would hang them on the bridges. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do that a lot, man. Like, they, there's other places in Mexico when you see that. But for that to happen in Cabo. Yeah. That's like, that's weird. an issue. That's, 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 that's an weird. issue. And it only happened that one time. Like, as far as I know, it's still, like, a chill place. Uh, not much shit like that going on. But other places in Mexico. Dude, like Juarez, dude, down the street. It like someone told me that they kill like twenty people a day over there. Yeah, or I think that's crazy. Bro. It's it's funny. Oh, uh, so Juarez is super fucking violent. But El Paso used to be like I think they've dropped to like five, but for the longest time they were the second safest city in the fucking country. Really? Believe it or not. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's next to Juarez, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. So, and it's it's <clears> weird <throat> because I uh, I kind of mentioned this last night when we all went out to get drinks, but I had uh, I spent a lot of time in El Paso growing up because my grandparents on my mom's side lived down there. And um, it was just always strange to me driving in El Paso, and you can literally see Mexico. Yeah. So, like, if you're driving down the fucking highway... And it's the ugly part, too. No, for real. Like, you look at Mexico, and it's, like, a bunch of pieces of sheet metal stapled together. It like, looks like it, lo- it looks like Colombia, bro. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, like, it's like broken down favelas yeah. and shit. Yeah, like, it's exactly, bad. Bro. It's right. bad. But then you look to your right, and there's a Best Buy. Yeah. And there's, like, a Walmart. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's, like, gas stations yeah. and water. Yeah, and yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's honestly fucking crazy to me, like, the... What borderlines can do to a country? You yeah, know, like what's happened. Exactly. It's abs- it's it's just asinine to me. Okay, so you start out at Nimi, and you because uh, I agree, your English since I've met you has gotten so much better. You think? Oh yeah. For real? Oh yeah, because it was it wasn't bad when I first met you, but you, I mean, I I, I was there long enough to notice like okay, obviously he's a fucking Mexican kid, like they're all fucking, you know what I mean? Like, and you, I remember when I first met you, your English was okay, but you were like kind of nervous speaking English. Really, I could notice it a little bit. No, way, I mean a lot. Dude. A lot of Mexican cadets are. Yeah, a lot of them are. They get a lot of them get nervous speaking English. Um, but then now you're fucking super well articulated, dude. You can hardly tell. Seriously, yeah, thanks, like, like obviously, like, like you have a Mexican accent. Yeah. But like, I if I would, I wouldn't be surprised if you had told me no. I learned English at the same time I learned Spanish. Yeah. Well, I wish, but <laughs> I mean, oh. works out. So, you go through Nimi. You graduated high school. What made you stick? Because they have a college, too. Yeah. So what made you stick around for college? Dude, honestly. Um, and did you do one year or two years of I college? I did one year. You did one, right. Yeah. Um, honestly, I stayed because I got lazy, bro. Like, my plan was from a get-go. It was to come here to NMSU. Um, but I don't know, dude. It was like. It's. Honestly, dude, it's, like, one of those times that, like, you don't want to do what you know you have to do. And I got lazy when it came to applying to colleges and shit. I applied to NMSU, but I did everything so late that it was just a better idea to go back to NIMI than it was to, like, make the full switch. Like, I got admitted to NMSU before the summer ended, after I graduated, but I just didn't do things quick enough because I was in Mexico and I still had all my stuff at NIMI. Uh, at NIMI. I didn't have a place to stay in NMSU. Um, so I was like, fuck it, dude. I guess I'm, I'm fucked for another year. <laughs> but it worked out. I mean, it was, bad. it was my best year. I mean, I had the most fun during junior college. And, I, yeah, it's just the best memories, bro. Yeah, yeah dude, college, the college experience at NIMI, like... Obviously, when you're there, you're kind of in this bubble, right? You're very much like, I'll be real, I was brainwashed. Like, I was very much bought into the system. Yeah. Believed everything. And, like, you know, I was I was, I was, was that cadet. I was like, why the fuck do these brand new college kids act like assholes half the time? What's going on? Yeah. Da, da, da. But now that I look back on it, it's like. It's ridiculous, huh? It's fucking crazy. Like, for instance, I went to the fucking meet with another friend of mine from NIMI last night. And we were, we were talking about a mutual friend of ours. That was, I didn't even know this motherfucker was our rap buddy, right? So this motherfucker started NIMI in 2011. Went for a couple years, dropped out, joined the Air Force. Uh, he ended up getting medically discharged. Did he go back? Doesn't know what he wants to do. He ends up going back. They it, He ends up getting in with Graf. Graf gets it, who's the commandant at the time. And that's the, pretty much the guy who runs like the, the cadet side of things of the school. He gets a waiver in with Graf, and he starts Nimi, the junior college, freshman year of college, as a 23-year-old. I think I heard of that guy, bro. Yeah. So how old are you now? I'm 23. You're 23. Okay. So imagine going to Nimi as you right now. Fuck no. Bro. Fuck no, right? Dude, that's the because we were talking about that yesterday, bro. I have nightmares, bro. I yeah. have nightmares. Well, because like back. They, <laughs> you know, it's a good learning experience as a kid yeah. to be like 20 years old and take orders from like an 18-year-old yeah. or a night. That's a good experience. Yeah. 
because obviously in the real world you're gonna have bosses that are younger than you. Yeah. You're gonna be the young guy in charge of people. That'll if you're you know if you get yourself in that position. Yeah. Um, that opportunity that's gonna happen. Yeah, just a good experience. It's a good experience. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> I was a fu- I'm still a dickhead, but I was a dickhead at 22, 23 years old, and I think about even me then going to Nimi. No. No. Yeah, fuck no bro. I, I would have been an asshole. He's like, what the fuck did you just tell me? Yeah. Like, that's not happening. Yeah, dude. It's, and it's just insane to me. Like, because that's not something that's really taught there, I think. That's like how to, how to, you have to figure it out on your own. How to look at a situation in real time from someone else's perspective. Yeah. You're not really taught that, right? At least I wasn't. It was it was very much just you know you fall in line yeah. you do your job you keep things in order Follow orders you and do follow, what you're told yeah it's it's militaristic and I get it but there's the the one of the flaws of that place is they don't really teach you they teach you critical thinking but not free thinking for real like and I think that's something that's really missing from that place and I just think about you know that college experience because I I agree like going from high school to college because you're fucking packed like your day is packed to the brim as a high schooler yeah, it's just go 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 seven or eight classes after school bullshit studying at night you're lucky if you're in bed by 11 all that kind of stuff but then in college it's literally just a normal college schedule yeah you if you want tuesdays and thursdays off you yeah. have them off yeah. that's what i did dude it was the best and you just fucking sleep it was day. the best <laughs> like going from high school to college in there was the best thing ever bro like really makes you appreciate time dude it was crazy. And also the thing is, people, like, they didn't, I mean, not to say that they didn't care about college students, but they were definitely more lenient on college people. Yeah, they were. So, like, if you had a, a dick, a guy like Cadre who was a dickhead, the moment you're in college, they don't care as much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're like, oh, this is just the college guy. Well, because there's, there's a level of, in my opinion, as a cadet, you look at the college kids, even when you're in high school, you're like, yeah, they're just in, they're in college, they're doing their thing. I don't want to mess with that. But then as a the good ones, the adult staff that were there, they came from a – and I spoke to a lot of them about it because I felt the same way. And the, a lot of their mindset was, look, as long as they're not causing trouble, let them be. They're, they're adults. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let them – like hold them to a certain standard or whatever. They have to follow, follow the rules, but – and don't I think, expect too much of them. Not even don't expect too much of them, but just keep it realistic. Yeah. Like, they're uh, they're not here for the fucking core of cadets. Yeah. They're here for ROTC. They're here for, most of them are there for athletics, yeah. college prep, and whatever also, dude, it was. And, like, you think about it, the older you get, the less you care about shit like that, you know? Meaning, meaning what? Uh, like, the older you, like, imagine you went back like the guy you said who was 23 and went back. You wouldn't give a shit about the core, bro. No. You wouldn't give a shit about the guy who was telling you to do what. It'd be a problem, obviously. Ugh. But you just wouldn't care as much. You wouldn't have... It, like, it's different when you're growing up as, like, a 15-year-old and they're teaching you all this stuff than going back when you're 23 or whatever age and you're older. You're not going to care. You're not going to You're not gonna grow up like that and you're just not going to care. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either. No, it's not. But it's just, it, it causes a problem in there. It causes issues. No, it does. It does cause issues. And so, and you brought up a really interesting point that you were lazy in applying to colleges. And I was kind of in that same point. I, uh, cause I remember my senior year of high school, our, uh, what was our title? Um, our advisor. Our advisor was like, hey, you guys need to apply to colleges. It's really need to start now, da, 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 all this stuff. And I was like, okay, fine. But I didn't want to fucking do it. Yeah. And the first reason was because I was lazy. Yeah. Straight up. I was tired. Same, I was bro. lazy. And you need to do that in your spare time. What fucking spare time do I have? College applications, like, UNM can take five minutes. Yeah. But colleges you might actually want to go to for a good program. Like, UNM has a great law program. They have a great medical program. But that's not things I wanted to get into. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, these other colleges that had a good... Uh, <clears> at the time, I wanted to do criminal justice. So these colleges that have really good programs, these applications can take hours. I don't have time for that. I'm lazy. And quite frankly, in my free time, I'm still this way. In my free time, I would do shit that I care about. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't give a care about I didn't care about anything. I cared about playing video games, eating Chinese food, and hanging with my friends. That's what mattered yeah. to me. And um so I just came from a point of like, well, I'm lazy. I don't want to do it. I don't want to use my spare time. And then on the other hand, it was also like I'm comfortable here. 
I don't know if you felt that too. I felt that too. Bro. Like, and that, I don't think that's like, something... it was just it was just easy, bro. It yeah, was like it was like a safety net. Exactly, you know? it was a comfort zone. It's and, not, and dude, like, I, I feel bad seeing all this shit now because I'd like to think that I'm not like that. I don't. I don't like being lazy. I don't like being. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm very disciplined. I'm a very disciplined person, and just realizing that I didn't. Like I, I didn't do it because of I was because I was lazy, bro. It just it, it makes me feel bad now, you know. I wouldn't feel bad. Here's why I say that because it's a it's a common thing that I don't think enough people want to talk about is that and and I think this applies to people because don't get me wrong, there were a lot of people that went there for four years of high school, three years of high school, graduated, and they couldn't wait to get the fuck out. Yeah. And fair enough, fair enough. Like that's fine. But even some of those people will tell you, yeah, by my second or third year there, I was comfortable. I had my friends. I had my routine. Yeah, a lot of yeah. it sucked. Yeah, we woke up at fucking five in the morning to do bullshit on, got used to on Wednesdays. You got used to you it. You got used to it, though. Yeah. And for me, it was like I faced two options because I started really drinking like in my back half. Yeah, the back half of my senior year of high school. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so... Um, I would never drink like on campus, but we went off on breaks and shit like that. And like, I got to a point where I was like, okay, um, this place keeps me in line. I need structure. Like I need structure. I need, uh, cause I've become very like self-disciplined, self-motivated now. But again, at the time I needed that. Yeah. I needed that platform. I needed that foundation to really put me in a place where, where structure was the only option. And so. I looked at the I looked at the game plan and I was like, okay, I could either go to UN, UNM, assuming that we could, we could afford it, go to UNM and live with my mom, which was not a fucking option. Like the whole reason I started going to NIMI in the first place was because when I an old childhood friend of mine, uh, like my mom, his mom were friends, we grew up together, that kind of situation, and he started going to NIMI as a freshman in high school. When I was, tw he's like two years older than me. So I was like 11 or 12. And I had heard about it. And I was like, and at the time I wanted to be in the military super fucking bad. I fucking, I, I was the, I call, I call our generation the Call of Duty generation. Yeah. We grew up on that shit, right? <laughs> For sure. So I was playing the fucking Call of Duty games, Medal of Honor, SOCOM, Navy SEALs, all that shit, right? So I was like, yeah, that's what I want to fucking do. And so when I hear about this place and it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, it's a military school. I live away from home. I get some kind of freedom, I'd imagine, because there's no way it's as bad as it is living at home. And honestly, I had more freedom at NIMI than I did at home. So I was like, okay, I have that option. So fuck yeah, I'm going to do it. I fucking hate living with my mom, so I'm going to go do that. And then when it came time to potentially go back, I was like, no. Okay, so I can either go back to UNM or go to UNM, live with my mom, and I don't exactly have enough confidence in myself that I'm actually going to be disciplined, go to class on time, do my homework. Cause like you were saying, you didn't have any option. Well, you had an option to go to class or not, but if you didn't go to class, you got in trouble. And the long story short of the discipline system, you didn't have marching for fucking seven hours in a square and the hot ass sun or the, the cold rifle. ass wind carrying a rifle in your fucking spare time. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm worth it. Yeah. So I'm not exactly convinced that I can go to class and all that stuff. And I was going to end up fucking drinking and partying because I saw that side. And I was like, that's appealing, but, like, I don't – I had enough foresight at, at the time to know that's a short-term thing. Yeah. And it wasn't a good idea. It's not going to benefit me. Yeah. Okay. That's the first option. The second option is I stay at NIMI. Yeah, it sucks here. Yeah, all this. And, yeah, all, like, all my friends left senior year. Literally all of them. Um, except for, like, maybe two. They were gone. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to miss the shit out of my friends. But I'll still be here. I'm comfortable here. I'm happy here. Um, the fucking administration likes me, so I'm going to get a lot of freedom, which I did. <laughs> I got a lot of freedom. And, you always um, make new friends, too. Yeah, exactly. And I ended up doing that. Yeah. I ended up making new friends anyway. And uh, it wasn't the same, because obviously they're your fucking rap buddies, right? Like, these are people you started out with. But, you know, I just felt real comfortable there. And then going back... As a college student, having all that freedom, having all that free time, like, dude, I couldn't crack a 2.6 GPA in high school. Couldn't do it. And some of it was my fault. 
I'll be honest, because right about into sophomore going into junior year, I was like, fuck this. This sucks. I'm just going to do the bare minimum so that I can fucking hang out with my friends. Like, as long as I'm passing my classes, Why fuck was this. that, bro? Like, did you just hate school or? Yeah, like, I just, I've, I've always been a poor student just because I don't give a fuck. Like, I just don't care about school. And I can never bring myself, like, I was very good at English. Like, I enjoyed writing. But I never wanted to admit myself that I enjoyed is that, is writing. Is that what Chaney loved you, bro? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Well, Ch- Chaney and I got along really well. He's a professor. I feel like you guys have the same sense of humor. Bro. Oh, yeah. Humor Very style. dark yeah. sense of humor. Yeah. We both love superheroes <laughs> and comic books. Yeah. Dude, he kept me in school, dude. Yeah. I think I told you guys this last night. But, like, um, I remember I was really going through it my junior I had him second semester of my junior year. I was really going fucking through it. And so I went into his office, and I, this is like my third week of his class, maybe. And so I was like, hey, listen, sir, uh, I'm kind of going through it right now. I need some third-party advice, and I see you kind of like superheroes. I need help. Like, I'm really going through it mentally right now. What the fuck do I do? And we had a good conversation, and uh, he what, what the conversation ended up turning into was, if you keep an A in my class, because he – have you ever been to his office? I – briefly i so, think so in his office he had like regular books and shit but he had fucking stacks of graphic novels and shit right and off to the side he had a fucking he had the full uh full run is what it's called it's like the full like story of uh of a comic that i wanted to read but i can never afford it or find it so he was like if you fucking keep an a in my class you can come in whenever you want and just check them out like a library and so that's what i did i busted my fucking ass in that class I kept an A, and I ended up doing that, and that actually ended up translating into some of my other courses. But then the other thing that really dragged me down was math. I've never been good at math, yes. never understood math. Um, I just and it, it, and again, I didn't have the maturity level to be like, okay, yes, you don't like it, but you have to do it, so you better get good at it. I didn't have that maturity level. My mind was that I'm just gonna do this. The I'm gonna get the bare minimum done. So I don't have to repeat yeah. any fucking. Out of the way. I don't have to repeat any uh, um, any years or anything like that. Because there was there's always that big stigma of being a super senior. I didn't fucking want that. Looking back on it, being a super senior is not that bad. Yeah. Because you graduate still. Who gives a shit? But at the time, it's people, e- it's just people making fun. Yeah, of Yeah, it's you're gonna get made fun of. You're that guy. <laughs> da, 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 <laughs> you know. Do. Few man, like yeah, it wasn't that bad. They were oh the yeah, funniest guys, dude. So, it's a you brush the fucking the mic. Oh, shit, yeah, you're good. Good. So, um, that's why I keep windscreens. Um, so, so I was like, okay, um, like literally all through high school, I would f- end up failing one math class, like without without a doubt, I ended up failing it, and then in the summer taking a summer course, every fucking time, dude. Really? Oh yeah, <clears throat> and then. At the uh, at the end of my senior year, I ended up having to take two math courses both semesters. And, like, I was so bad at geometry, dude. I was... Dude, so... that seems so easy to me. Yeah. Like, everyone struggled with geometry. And I was like, bro, this is easy, bro. It's I just couldn't shapes. Get... And literally, it got to the <laughs> point... It got to the point... Who was calling me? So, it got to the point where we... Uh, I would get... Like, a hundreds on all of my homeworks to build my grade up to, like, a fucking... And then fail the exam? Yeah, to be like, a 67. Were you, were you using this Bible or what? Fail it, and then... No, I wasn't using the Bible. I would go into his... his uh, my math teacher, I would go into his office or classroom every fucking morning. And just get it done. And check the homework. Because he let me... He let us do that. We would get the homework checked. And then make sure I get a hundred on it, turn it in. I get like a sixty-seven in the in the but course. You learning anything? Yeah, no. Yeah. Fail it, and then knock it down to like a sixty, build it back up, failed it, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I just math really drug me down. I just didn't want to focus on it, didn't want to do it. And so instead of actually learning it, I was just like, I'm just gonna do the bare minimum, and like, you know, move on with my life. But going into college, dude, three point five was nothing. Yeah, man, dude. Honestly, I can probably say that I, I've i never failed a class in my life, bro. Like, yeah. not once I've never failed a class. I In high school, I always had – I always stayed above a 3.0, but I wasn't, like – I wasn't a great student, bro. Like, 
I was definitely not like a great student. I think that I like in some cases, like in math as well, I was doing the bare minimum. But I mean, I still managed to keep above a 3.0, right? Dude, first semester of college, I get a 4.0. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, no chance, bro. No way this just happened. And yeah, I didn't get a 4.0 after that, but at least I got it one semester, right? See, and that's what happens with a lot of people. And it was funny because I had friends, obviously, and you had them too, I'm sure, where they would leave, they would leave Nimi uh, at some point in their high school career, go back to their public school, and just start knocking it out. Yeah. 4.0s, left and right, high schools, yeah. nothing. And for me, honestly, there was a couple of times where I was like, fuck, should I even do this anymore? Like, my friends that are in high school, at a public school in Albuquerque, they're getting 4.0s, they're chilling, they do whatever they want. Dude, I had a full beard by fucking junior year. Like, I've maintained this since my junior year of high school. And so every morning I'm fucking scraping my face. I'm getting bitched at if I have like a little bit of stubble. And I'm like, bro, I can only afford so many razors. Yeah. Like, please stop. <laughs> it's so annoying. Please stop. <laughs> and, um, you know, it just got to the point where I was like, no, I need to focus enough and stay put. Um, so obviously you were successful in your time at, at the school. One thing I want to kind of pick your brain about is the disciplinary system. Because I'm sure, like just like me, you had some friends that just like got caught in a spiral oh, yeah. where it was like they either <clears throat> cuz like one thing that really trapped a lot of a lot of friends that I have was they had like a really dirty roommate and so their room kept getting fucked up on inspections they would get in trouble have to march they lose time to study their GPA drops did you ever have friends where that happened right they're spending so much time doing their fucking marching their tours and it takes away from their study time. It takes away from their academics. Makes them tired. Makes them demotivated. And they end up just getting caught in this spiral. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I didn't... I haven't thought about it like that. But yeah, it happened a lot. Even to... Yeah, close friends of mine, dude. And it kind of sucks because it's... In a way, it's like... The, it's the school's fault that you're getting the bad grades. Because they're not giving them a chance to, like, study or do anything. When they just have you marching tours and shit. But... That's a good point, dude. Like, it did happen a lot. Especially when you had, like, all these dickheads who, like, just made you march for whatever all these hours. It was bad. Well, because I, th I, I think about it sometimes. And the amount of power that a 17 to 20-year-old could have over another 17 to 20-year-old's life is insane. Yeah. And... I think about it because you, because like a lot of kids there, because again, we're all kids. We're all trying to figure out not only how to like live your life and how to, how your brain works, how you react emotionally to things, how you process things, what your study habits are, what your social habits are, how you talk to people, how you interact with people. And so you're, you're, you're dealing with everything of puberty. And then if so, you're having a shitty day and some kid who's below you pisses you off, you can get him in trouble. Yeah. And then what if that kid either is an asshole, let's be real, what if he is an asshole, or he just doesn't know what the fuck is going on, he keeps fucking up, or she keep fucking up, and then they just keep having all this disciplinary shit stacked on them. And it's like, what do you do for that kid? Dude, I, I saw it happen so many times, bro. And there were people who deserved it, there were people who didn't deserve it. Dude, one of my rep buddies... It was this kid from Mexico. Dude, he had, like, <laughs> I'll never forget that day, bro. You know how on, like, Wednesdays they'd pull up with the the sheet with the tours and the merits? Bro, this guy racked up, like, 800 tours. 800 tours, bro. <laughs> and no one knew how. But apparently what happened was he was missing tour squad, bro. And you know how, it, you know, every time you missed it, you got, like, you got a shit ton more tours added, right? So what was fucked up is, like, I don't remember how it was, like, after I left, but I remember when I was there, they would do roll call for every hour. And yeah. every hour that you miss, they added seven. Yeah. So if you're doing four a day and you miss all four. Fuck you. Dude. What? That's 28 four, what, more. That's, that's, yeah, seven times four is 28, right? Yeah, this is 28 <laughs> Fuck more. Fuck you. You have 33 now or 31 or whatever, bro. That's crazy. 
Wait, anyway, so your friend racked up eight hundred dollars. Yeah, eight hundred fucking tours, bro. And the poor kid, like, you could tell that he didn't mean like. He tried, bro. I could tell. You know, like he was. That's trying. the phrase. That's the <laughs> phrase for like almost every kid. That's like he's not an asshole. Yeah. He just keeps getting. He's like he's trying, dude. He was just, just like he was kind of dumb, bro. Like I'm not gonna lie, he was a little dumb, but he tried, bro. He he was high speed. He was a high speed kid. But when it came to tours, he didn't know what the fuck was going on, and he racked up 800 tours. Next week, he was gone, bro. He was gone. He was like, "Fuck this! I'm not marching 800 hours." See, I always thought there should be, like, either once a year or you can do it or, like, once during your time at NIMI, whatever it is. But you should be able to go bankrupt where it's like, hey, I'm like getting... I declare bankruptcy? Yeah. Shit, like... Yeah, it's like, I'm going crazy here. I can't keep up. Fucking... Remove can we all my tours. Remove my tours. Remove my demerits. Demote me to a fucking private or whatever it is or a recruit. Let me start over. Yeah. Let me like financially, right? Let yeah. me start over with this bullshit. That'd be interesting, dude. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. Maybe maybe that'd help a lot of people out. But dude, like and there there was some other people who got in that place and but they actually deserved it, bro. I remember when I was a PSG, I had this Russian kid in my <coughs> troop. Dude, the guy was dealing drugs. Like he said according to him What was his name? Rudnev. Cause that sounds familiar. Dude, he was he was dealing and you were there too, because that was my second year. Um he was dealing drugs. It was this weird-looking Russian kid. No offense, I like the kid, you know? But, like, he... I could tell he was on some shit. And according to him, he was, like, in the Russian mafia or something. But he was dealing drugs, bro. And then one day... One day, the uh, paramedics pull up to the box. And they're getting this kid out of this room. I remember this. And apparently... A friend of the Russian kid told me that the Russian kid made that other kid OD or some shit because he hadn't paid him for some other drugs. Like, something like that, bro. And I was like, dude, these kids are fucking around, (laughs) you know? And these were like rats, bro. Rats under me. Well, and like what's crazy to me is the amount of drugs that go through that school. Like, Yeah. yeah, dude, like there's fucking weed. That happens. Oh, yeah. That's everywhere. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think kids under the age of 20 should be smoking weed. Like, now that everything that we're learning, now that weed, and that's one of the great things about the legalization of marijuana um, at the state level is because, yeah, people get to smoke recreationally and you get tax dollars. Yeah, that's all fine and good. But a lot of these states, like Colorado's doing it, they're, now that this, the weed strains are getting uh, regulated, they can run tests on them. Like, yeah. They can actually do tests on, like, okay, what does marijuana do to an average person in this many um, dosages, right? Dosages. Doesn't it actually, like, lower your IQ long um, term? That, and that's the scary part, too, is that it's a case-by-case basis. Um, but it's but they're also finding out, they're able to run, run because uh, of, like, the, the death of brain cells and shit like that. But they're also finding, like, okay, uh, what does marijuana do to... Um, uh, what does it do to uh, people with schizophrenia? Does it help them? Does it hurt them? PTSD. Shit like that. Yeah. Right? Bipolar. And it really... Um, it, that's like one of the positive sides of it. And But now we're finding because of the brain damage that it can do over a long period of time. There's some people who can smoke weed all their fucking life like a champ from an early age and they're fine. But there's other people who are just fucking it. They get... Um, they, don't, they don't get addicted to it but they have an addictive personality and they're like... Oh, I'm, just gonna, stop. I'm just gonna be a burnout, mm-hmm. right? I'm just gonna be a burnout, a pothead, whatever you want to call it. And they just, they just, they're fine with. They're it. always smoking weed. They're yeah. always on the couch, lazy. Dude, it's but, it's, and it it's, happens. Dude, I I've seen it, bro. Like since I moved, well, since I transferred to NMSU, bro, I saw so many of my friends go down that hole, bro. Well, like it, people, people who were like pretty decent at NIMI, bro, and they get here and they start smoking weed. And they just don't go to class. They fail all their classes. They, like, literally go to class twice in the whole entire semester, bro. Yeah. And, you know, and I've got friends that fucking smoke weed all day long. They love it. And they're great people. I, yeah. love, I love those guys, you know. But it's also, like, you know, on the negative side of that, there is none of that. You need dis- a balance, bro. None of, That's exactly. The There's no balance. There's no discipline. There's yeah. no real self-motivation. Yeah, they exactly. Work, they work dead-end jobs. They uh, they become, like, NPCs. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's that mindset, yeah. and it's sad. Um, but to give you a funny uh, 
like the another perspective on that story about the Russian kid who's dealing drugs. So, what the fuck? So we had a meeting. <laughs> I'll cut this out. Maybe, maybe not. Ah. So, so when I was that was second second semester, when uh, Joiner took over, right as the RC, me, him, uh, Patello, and Graf, we all sat down. And we were, we were in one of the conference rooms that the Commandant had. And it was like a transition meeting type thing. Like, how's this going to go down for the next semester? Da, 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 whatever. So this is the end of the first semester. Just kidding. End of the first semester. And we have this meeting. And Graf is telling Jonah, like, he goes, so now that you're in control, you got to know about the bad stuff, too. Like the stuff we're dealing with at our administration level. And my I was I was brain dead through that whole fucking meeting. I was like, this is boring, this is bullshit, why am I here? And uh but once he said that, my ears kind of perked up. And I was like, <laughs> What do you mean bad? <laughs> like, what's uh what's going on? Because I didn't do a whole lot, like yeah. with that side of things. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I any of my free time, especially with the girl that I was dating at the time, she lives fucking two hours away. So I would spend a lot of my time over in Hobbs. Uh Hobbs in Mexico. So I was like, okay, uh, what, what's he about to tell us? And he goes, what do you know about the drug dealing that's going on here at the school right now? The actual problem we're having with it. Not just the one or two instances, but the problem we're having. And Jordan goes, well, I don't know. what are you talking about? I have no idea. And he goes, well, yeah, we know that kids smoke pot. We know kids drink, whatever it happens. But, uh, yeah, we've got people dealing PCP here. We got people dealing fucking mushrooms here. All that kind of shit. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, whoa, like, what the <laughs> fuck? And he goes, yeah, we, we just caught a kid. We caught a kid who uh, who had ended up buying mushrooms off the internet. Had it mailed to oh, Nimi. Oh, that was a Mexican yeah, kid, had it, bro. Had it mailed to Nimi. And they found the mushrooms in a DVD case. That was a Mexican kid. I'm and, so sure that was a Mexican kid. I don't know his name or anything, but I remember he was Mexican. So he goes, do you know anything about that? And George's like, no, I have no idea. He goes, but what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> he, he goes, well, Mr. Jordan, you need to have a better attitude about it. And we really need to figure out how to da, 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 da. And I'm sitting there like, all right, old boy's got a point. Like, how are we going to fucking stop kids from, you know, buying shit online? Yeah. Like, what the fuck do you do about that? And then what was a really scary one. So there was a kid, I forget his name. He was a junior, I think, in high school. Real quiet kid, real kept to himself, and his roommate was having, like, they were getting into fights, like, arguments and shit. They never threw fists or anything, but they were getting into fights. And so, Graf, or apparently what had happened was the roommate got real concerned with this kid because he was, like, like mental health reasons, right? So, started getting real concerned. So, he, he put in a couple requests, and then finally, like, on the third or the fourth one, the campus police and then his respective TLA, they did a uh, a health and wellness check on his ass. They took him out of the room. Or no, he was gone at the time. Like He was off doing like an activity or furlough, whatever he was doing. So they scour this kid's room, right, looking through everything, like the little cubby hideaway thing behind your desk, went through everything. Well, he had, because you, know, you can keep civilian clothes in your room. He had this longer, like, jacket, like a winter coat. You know what they find? What? They find a fucking five-shot revolver and a hundred rounds. Little thirty-eight snub. Bro, what? That's fucking crazy, So they find dude. it. And what appara- year was this? This was the back end of my first semester, sophomore year of college. So... They were... So I was there for that? You were there. Oh, yeah. Dude. And so, obviously, this is not, like, publicized things at the time because... Well, yeah, of course what, not. Because, I've never heard of well, that what's the Because what's the, what's the narrative? Oh, they stopped... Because I, I took it as, oh, shit, you just stopped the school shooting. Yeah. Right? So... <laughs> That's so, literally what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so they... So I guess they set the kid down. And by the time we were having this conversation, the kid was gone. Like, right. he got arrested. Right. Because what people don't know is that Nimi is uh, state property. Like, it's state grounds, yeah. quote-unquote. So that's why they have, like, a big tobacco policy. Because people are like, why the fuck 
are you pissed about kids smoking cigarettes? Out like health issues, okay, fine. But like, let's be real. The Mexican culture is you smoke cigarettes. Yeah. Like that's just a. I I smoked cigarettes. With I my got Mex- caught a couple times, yeah, bro. With my Mexican roommates. Yeah. That's that's just what it was. We'd stay up on Saturday nights, play Mortal Kombat, smoke cigarettes out the back window. Not a good habit. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Not a good habit. But that was just it's still gonna happen. You it was the it. it was the culture. And like some of these, <laughs> what really cracked me up with like some of these uh, Mexican kids, they would have like, the cartons of Marlboros or camels or whatever from Mexico. Yeah. And so they would have the like the surgeon general warning or whatever about cancer, but then they would literally have a picture of a blacked out lung. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, that's how the cigarette package were in Mexico. So I thought that was fucking hilarious. So anyway, um, but, and you can't smoke or you can't use tobacco products on state property. It's, it's a, it's a law. And so that's why they're super like big about that shit. But anyway, um, the kid got arrested because he had a firearm on state property. Right. Not even just he brought it into a school, but the fact that it was state property, they, they brought him up on fucking charges. They charged him as an adult, from what I know. Um, but anyway, then that, that was like way after, obviously. But, but, so I guess they questioned the kid, obviously. Like they, they, they got him and they were like, so why do you have a, yeah, what's a fucking for, revolver in your room? And he goes, what oh, are you trying to do? He goes, oh, I have it for self defense. And apparently the cop was like, the, the campus police, he was like, okay, okay. So why do you have a hundred rounds? Is that self defense too? <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. man. So that I don't know. It's interesting. Do you know like, the kid's name? No, no, I forgot his name. Oh, well, that's nuts. But I, it's, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's a good and a bad thing about that place. I'm sure you've exp- you've thought about this too, where it's like the I always refer to Nimi as being like in its own world, like it's a bubble. Yeah, you know, like. I'm very happy that I made a lot of stupid, uh, like, did things or said some really stupid things in, in, a, in a public format, in a leadership position there. There, yeah. Because I would have done it either way. Yeah. I would have done it either way. Just doesn't get out of that bubble. Yeah, if I do it there, I look like an idiot, I get in trouble, whatever it is. But if I do that in a business setting, You're if fucked. I do that in the real world, dude, I get fired. <laughs> There's no going back. I get fired. Yeah. Now I've, and then, depending on what, like, circle it's in, depending on what... Um. Uh, industry, I guess, right? It's uh, I get a stigma now, right? Because I'm saying stupid shit. I'm an asshole. Whatever it is, and then yeah, I could get fired from a job. I lose money, and I just I I find it very like it's a it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because then shit like that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. It, so you brought up something kind of interesting too. That I kind of want to dig into. Um. Going to going to school in America, effectively living in America, is it is a live-in school. Did you have the lo- the further along you got, did you ever find yourself wanting to go back to Mexico to live, like live in Mexico? There was one moment when I was dating this girl in Mexico. It was actually when I was going to go to college. Um, this is the end of your senior year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was dating this girl, and she was going to this school in Mexico, like this college. And I was like, fuck, well, yeah, I was like, fuck it. I'm going there, too. Different school, but, you know, same state. I was, like, trying to go with her. And that was pretty much the only time, dude. Like, after that, it that never happened, obviously. Um, and we ended up breaking up. And, yeah, I just stayed here, bro. And then, you know, luckily, I didn't do that. You know. So, and the reason I bring the, that up, the, basically the only times that I ever thought about coming back to Mexico was after high school when I was going into college. There was like two different places that I thought I wanted to go in Mexico, but dude, looking back, I'm glad that I didn't. And, and the reason I think it's inter- it's important to ask people like you that because you're from Mexico, you are Mexican. Yeah, there's a lot of pride in the Mexican culture. There's, yeah. there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of like patriotism, uh, nationalism for being a Mexican. And like we even had like the, like uh, the Mexican Independence Day that was celebrated at Nimi. Yeah. Because there were so many fucking Mexican so many kids, Mex- and I love that. I love yeah. that shit. Like I think that's so fucking cool. Like I'm not from Mexico, but I've got like my my uh, my dad's side of the family, his parents, uh, his mom was from. It was either Guadalajara or Chihuahua, Mexico, and then the, those are pretty far apart, man. Yeah, I forget which one. Yeah, I forget which one. <laughs> And I think it was Chihuahua. And then the dad was from Mexico City. 
Oh, okay. So I never, I've never been to Mexico. I don't speak Spanish under that, but like I would go to the fucking Independence Day shit because it's it's cool to see yeah. that. It's cool to see that culture be alive for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, but what? What was it about the further along you went or what, like, what was it that made you go, you know what, I'm going to stay in America? Dude, I, what I love about America is that, well, okay, thing is in Mexico, Mexico is like a very enclosed culture, like, like you're saying, you know, like everyone comes together and they celebrate and shit like that, but it's also got its bad sides. Like, uh, there's a very obvious, like socioeconomic pyramid type of thing where like the amount of money that you have really affects the way people treat you and really affects basically the whole outcome of your life (coughs) and i hate that bro i fucking hate that because the people who are more towards the top they can be dickheads bro they can be fucking dickheads in what way like they're just assholes bro it's like a like like shitty people, you know? It's like how can I say this, man? They're just assholes, bro. Like <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's just like people can be dicks. Um they treat you like or well not not me per se cuz it's not like I'm fucking broke or anything, but like you can see how people Well, cuz your treat- family's not like super super rich, but you had money. Exactly. Like it's you guys like, came from like money. I'm, I'm I'm fine. Yeah. You know, I'm fine. And I got to, you know, hang out with a lot of those people that I'm talking about. So it's like, I see the way people are. I see the way they treat others. And it's something that I don't really like, <coughs> dude. And I noticed that when I came here, it's so different, bro. Because everyone's just doing their own thing. That's the way it felt It felt for me. Everyone's just doing their thing in America. You can, you know, you can hang out with whoever you want. It's like people are less judgmental of you. You know, it's more, you're, you're more independent in a way. You don't really depend on society and the, the way they think of you and, you know, what you have and what you can show and all these things, dude. I love that about this place. Well, it's not like that. And see, it's funny that you frame it like that because slowly but sure, it's kind of ramping up now, like post-COVID. But slowly but surely, that is what our society is turning into. It's quickly turning into strictly based on status, yeah. strictly based on the amount of money you have, your social media presence, like what you can bring to the table. And I think it's interesting because so in New Mexico, like what I love about New Mexico is it has the the pride. It has the culture. It's got the tightness of what you kind of just described in New Me- in Mexico yeah. proper. Right. It has that. But then on the other hand, if you kind of want to just disconnect from that, do your own thing, you can do that too. And I've, that's pretty much how I li- I've lived my life up until doing this podcast. Yeah. I never went out and ingrained myself into the city of Albuquerque. Yeah. I never went out and met people, went out and did things, like learned about the cultures and did all that. And I've lived in Albuquerque my whole life. Yeah. But I just never felt the need to, yeah. right? And that's fine. And... But that's what's cool about it. You don't have to like shape shift to fit somewhere. But you know? but we but also in the same way Nimi was, New Mexico because of the socioeconomic problems, because of the, how poor our fucking state is. Like for da- dating, for instance, right? If you want to go find yourself a pretty girl, like wherever in New Mexico, nine times out of ten, they're not going to give a fuck here about how much money you have, how many followers you have on social media, um. Uh, if you walk into a room, how many people know you? Uh, where you sit at a, excuse me, at a restaurant, stuff like that. They're not going to care about that. But if you go to a place like L.A., oh, Miami, yeah. New York, you know these higher end places, that dating pool, a guy like you and I, let's be, let's let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> we're competing with like millionaire athletes, yeah, actors, CEOs, you know potentially billionaires yeah you know you're competing with that and that and i feel like that's starting to slowly like almost infect the country you know what i mean and so but to go back to why you wanted to stay in in uh america do you do you find yourself like are you are you proud of america right now like are you happy to say like i live in america 
kind of like ju- juxtaposing that to, to how Mexico is right now and all that. Uh, like, do you find yourself being happy being in America? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I don't know if proud's the right word because, I mean, I'm happy, dude. Don't get me wrong. I'm much happier here than I'd be anywhere else, you know? Definitely. But I can't say that I'm proud, dude. I mean... So why do you, <laughs> why do you feel like you'd be happier here than anywhere else? Because... I feel like there's more opportunities for me here than there would be anywhere else. And, well, maybe not more opportunities, but better opportunities, you know? Like, I could launch myself further here than I could anywhere else. So, that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I mean by that. And, like I said, dude, it's just a matter of the people that I've been, the, it's, I don't know, dude, it's maybe... You you brought up the L.A. thing, how it's so different over there. Maybe it's just New Mexico, dude. Maybe it's just the fact that I've been in New Mexico and it's not like that. It's not like in L.A. But it's just the people, the experiences that I've got here, they're so nice, dude. Like, I've loved every year that I've been in New Mexico. And it's been since 2015. I've loved it. It, it might be, you know, the trash can of the United States or whatever. <laughs> Might be the butthole of the country, but I don't care, dude. I've had, I, like, I've had a blast, and I, I love it. So, and then, so, what do you think is hindering the pride in living in America for yourself? Because I mean, you could, you could talk hypotheticals about just the country as a whole. I think, but like, because, um, and I, and again, I think it's interesting to ask you that because you come from a culture that's so proud to be in Mexico, and Mexico is going to shit. Yeah, everyone knows it. And yeah. it's very sad. Like I don't. Say, I'm not happy to say that. I'm like, yeah, fuck Mexico. No, like, but no it's not the at truth, all. Bro. But it's, it's the, the truth. truth. So, w- what is kind of hindering you from bringing that type of pride towards America? Um, it might be somewhat the same stuff. It's like, dude, it's it's basically just the government, bro. Like I fucking hate the government. <laughs> I fucking hate them, dude. And th- yeah, there's literally no exception. Bro. Like they're all nasty little rats, <laughs> for real. And everything they do is for their own benefit. I feel like, I feel like since COVID, bro, it's every dude. Since COVID, everything changed in my mind. Since COVID, I feel like I realized a lot of things. I feel like I realized how like what like a lot of things are like a theater, bro. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know if I want to go down a rabbit yeah, hole, but ahead. yeah, no, go ahead, dude. dude it's we just, got time. Go it's ahead. It's just obvious when when people are trying to hide something. It's obvious when they want to shift your attention. It's obviously it's obvious when they want to, when they don't want you to realize certain things. And I'm talking about the government, obviously, but it's just obvious, man. And it's, I don't know. It's just so many things happened since COVID, bro. That just it, dude. Like so, what I thought was interesting about COVID, in my opinion, was aside of the obvious like insanity that went down, is that at least to me. And you can obviously look back on our nation's history and you see all the crazy shit that's happened, all the horrible things the government has done, all the false flag stuff, the Tuskegee experiments, all that. And what's sad is, like, a lot of that stuff used to be, like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. Oh, that's not true. That never happened. But it's not, It's it's not though. Like, all of it's real. And so, but for me growing up, I don't know why I'm interested in politics, I don't know why I'm interested in the way the government works, but there's just something inside of me that's like, yo, I, you should pay attention to that shit. And I'm, and I'm envious, like straight up, dude. Like I'm envious of people that don't give a fuck about the government, that don't give a fuck about uh, how they run our lives or anything like that. It's um, the, the ignorance, the willful ignorance that people can live in and be <clears> like, <throat> it doesn't matter, you know, it's fine. We're all going to be okay. Like, I'm jealous of that. And the reason I say that is like growing up for me, it was always like, yeah, you know, no matter what's going to happen, no matter what's going on, the government is like structured and it's set up in a way that it all, it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be fine. It's going to work out. We can have a couple of idiots in office. We'll be okay. But now with COVID going down and living in a post-COVID world, like we kind of understand now how important it is. Who is your governor? Yeah. Who is your mayor? Like here in New Mexico, we had some of the lowest infection rates across the board and some of the heaviest lockdowns. You know what I mean? 
Um, I'm going to take a break real quick. I'm going to give myself some more water. All right, and we're back. Um, but yeah, it's like you're, you're, you're really finding out now how important it is to have all these people, the right people in these positions, or at least competent enough. Yeah. You know, to be in these positions. Um, like, for instance, now we're finding out, like, how important it is to have a really good fucking chief, uh, what, like, like the transportation department or whatever it is, the, that, that part of the cabinet for Biden. Because, uh, you know, the guy who's running it now, Buttigieg, I don't know what you're keeping up with all that, but so we had, um, because he used to be a candidate for president. And I was kind of down for him at the time. I was like, okay. He seems well spoken. He seems like he had a good head on his shoulders. I couldn't care less that he's gay. Like live your life, but you know it's um we we he seems like a decent candidate. Didn't make it obviously. Now he's the transportation guy, and he is fucking up that job left and right. Like we had the issue where all of the flights, like the oh, operating yeah. system, went down, yeah. and they had nothing to say for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got the derailment that happened in Ohio and all the, like a bunch of water supply is fucking, there were two derailments now, I think. Oh, I didn't hear about this. What was the second I, one? I have no idea. I, I just think there were two. So, you know, all the water supply is fucking poison. They have the potential to have acid rain and all this crazy shit. And it took Biden's administration fucking two weeks to get out there and the only, or two and a half. And the only reason they went out there is because Trump beat him by a fucking week. Trump went out there a week before them, and they were off in, or Biden went off to Ukraine instead. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's shit like that that makes you go, yeah, dude. maybe dude, it's and important. I've, I've made my own observations, like I said, since COVID, <laughs> where I'm like, why? <laughs> like, why did this happen? Why did you guys do that? Like you what? Know? <sighs> okay. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> like, starting with, starting with the vaccine, bro. Like, I'm going there. I don't give a fuck. When, you know, you know, I'm into like stocks and investing and all that shit. Um, wh- when I f- when I was first getting into it, um, I saw this kid on Twitter who made like a million dollars on investing in Pfizer, bro. When they were doing the whole vaccine research, obviously the you know the company, the stock had a rally and stuff. Guy made a killing, bro, a killing investing in Pfizer. Anywho, I started getting into it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to Pfizer too. I don't give a fuck. So I put money in Pfizer. And um, yeah, so I have my money there, bro. And this is when they were doing their whole research. They were coming up with the reports and stuff uh, before the vaccine came out. Before, like way before. And every time there was like a news report or something, obviously the stock was going to be affected and I had my money in it. So I wanted to know what was going on. So I'd go in there and I'd read all these things and dude, literally in every report, there was a bunch of red flags where I'd be like, there's no fucking way I'm going to put this in my body, bro. Like no fucking way, no fucking way a woman should put this in the, in her body either, especially if she's pregnant, bro. Cause it was never tested for the longest time. It wasn't tested. So like I, I, I can't even think about them off the top of my head right now, but there were so many things, bro, so many things in all these reports, so many numbers that just seemed like, dude, this is not, this is definitely not worth it. And I'm not going to do that. Not only that, but the fact that they came, they came up with it, like the formula for it within, from what I know, in 48 hours, dude, like literally in 48 hours, they came up with the formula. And so I was like, dude, no way. There's no way I'm doing that. And so that was one thing. And then uh, obviously it gets the emergency use authorization, you know, whatever. And then immediately, like right off the bat, you start having all these, you know, Bell's palsy things, you know, fucking heart problems, all this shit, dude. Like all these things. And obviously in my head, I'm thinking, bro, this like this got released last week. Imagine what's going to happen in two, three years or four or five or ten or whatever, dude. So, I mean, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I have my vaccines, you know, I'm just, it was just a d- very different case. It was a very different scenario for that particular vaccine. Well, and what was worrying about it was, yeah, because I've read some stuff about where they talk about why it was pumped out so fast, how they're able to get the information and get the formula going and all that type of shit. And sure, but what was worrying the most to me was in the height of covid 
they never talked about, okay, this is how you take care of your body. Yeah. How important is sleep? Workout, sleep. Eating right, you know. vitamin D. Like, yeah. it was something like, it was something like 60% or some shit of this country is vitamin D deficient, like severely deficient in vitamin D. Oh, shit. And. People need to go out more. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and maybe that's why I like being outside so much right now is I yeah. feel good. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just there was no real talk about that. It was like, take the, like the magic pill. Yeah. I like, take the thing it's going to save your life. Yeah. And that was what was always scary to me was like they, it's hard for me to believe. Dude, that, and, and, and there's so much more that goes behind it, bro. They're like, you, you have to look at who owns these companies, who's getting money from these companies, like all the investors involved, all the funds involved, bro. It's such a deep rabbit hole. And it's just like, you know, m the world revolves around money, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And like everything is based around money and people will do whatever for money. And it, it's just what happened, dude. Like once again, it was all because of money, you know, a company that wanted money. That's it. And they got it. Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, it's just, it's crazy, bro. It's like, I, like, I don't want to get into the details, bro, but like so many things that just seem like, bro, this is so sketch. This is so bad. There's no reason why anyone really should even try to get this bro and, and what's but what's crazy still though is even through all of this has been going on we're still the best place to live like we are yeah i still believe that that we are still the best country to be at and i think that's why it's interesting it's important to get um we get a perspective like yours where it's like you come from a different fucking country yeah and yet you still want to stay here yeah you know what i mean and it's it's, it, it's so like like you said you're getting into a lot of like investments and Stuff like that. So, like, what got you into doing that? What got you into finance? And, like, what do you, like, as much as you can talk about it, like, what are you doing now? Um, well, it started with, like, it, I mean, literally first started with, like, just looking at a Robin Hood app. Or ad, sorry. A Robin Hood ad. And I get the app and I, you know, get, and then I get Cash App, bro. And, dude, I, <laughs> it was so, so fucking weird. Um, one day, um, I was, I had like $700 in cash app and cash app lets you invest in different companies, bro. So I look at this company that's like, uh, it's called Xpeng. It's a, like a Chinese EV company like Tesla, but in China. And, dude, I was drunk one night, and I was like, fuck it, dude. Like, I'm putting $700 in, in next peng right now, bro. And so I put that money in there. Next day, I made, like, $300, and that's when I was like, this is this is pretty interesting, bro. Like, it's just money out of thin air. Uh, like, seemingly, of course, yeah. right? So that's kind of how it started, and then I look at all this Pfizer stuff. I see these people on Twitter who are making, like, ridiculous amounts of money, and I'm like, dude, like, I want to do that too, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I slowly start getting into it, dude. And then, bro, this was all basically, you, you know the AMC GameStop bullshit, right? Yeah. Like, the massive short squeeze and all that? Yeah. This was pretty, like, recent, like, just before that happened. Um, is when I started getting into it, bro. And I get into this um, this Discord server called Atlas. <laughs> Fuck. They all ended up sued by the SEC now. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I get in this Discord called Atlas where they, like, give, like, education off as far as, like, investing, trading stocks. They give out, uh, they give call outs, you know, like, invest in this shit and invest in all this shit. And there was this guy, Zach Morris, who said AMC one day he said AMC I didn't know dude I was still I was a noob still like yeah. literally I didn't know what I was doing I was just pushing buttons but so far it had been working for me like I'd made like a few hundred dollars off literally just pushing buttons I hadn't experienced a real loss so this guy Zach Morris he's like put uh money in AMC there it's gonna fucking run AMC was at four dollars bro and you know how AMC and GameStop ran together. Right. So AMC, I put my money in. I buy shares at $4, bro. I think I put in like $500. I, I don't know. I don't know how much money I put in there. But, dude, I put money one day. I go to sleep. 
next day I wake up, I had thousands of dollars, bro. Yeah. I was like, a, I was a sophomore in college, I think. Dude, I had thousands of dollars literally just from buying something and holding it overnight. And I was like, this is fucking crazy, bro. So it's that's kind of how my interest started. And then I went off and did different things. I I started doing penny stocks. Um, I started doing options. And right now I'm doing futures. Um, it's been like I was telling you yesterday, bro. It's a pretty crazy ride. It's a lot of ups and downs. Like obviously there's it's not always winning money. You always lose money, especially when you're not all that well educated. And it's all been a huge le learning curve for me as far as so many different things, as far as how it works, as far as like risk management, as far as basically making the right choices, bro. And like having a plan, sticking to it, being disciplined, stuff like that. Yeah. Your psychology, it, it has such a big, big impact into it, bro. <laughs> like literally, I have found out so much about myself since I started trading, bro. Because I'm not, I'm not doing stocks anymore. I'm doing futures right now, and it's not like holding stuff for a long period, long periods of time. It's literally in and out within less than f five or ten minutes, you know. And dude, it's holy shit, dude! It's a crazy ride as far as like your own head. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And I, the first, the first real money that I ever made was off of that, which was the AMC thing. AMC GameStop thing, which obviously it was like, I don't know how much you know about it, but that doesn't happen every day. No, it not happens at all. like once every, I don't know how many years. I have no idea when it's gonna happen again. I have, I'll be very surprised if it happens soon. But it's just like, it's kind of a miracle. A lot of people got millions off of that just by doing nothing. <laughs> so. Yeah, so it comes to a point where you're like, okay, if I want to stick to this, I have to learn something, right? So I started do like I said, I started doing penny stocks and I was, dude, I sold my car. I sold my car and I, I, I used the money to trade penny stocks and dude, I was doing so good for months. I was doing good. Um, I was like making really good money. I remember, dude, I even like, I was in Cabo trading. I was showing my mom like every day I'd make like hundreds, even thousands of dollars and she'd be like, take my money right now, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, let me give you money and do this. Um, and then, dude, I just, I started doing options. And it was kind of, do you know what options are? Uh, vaguely, yeah. Well, it's like, um, it's, the point with options is it's a lot more volatile and it, there's a lot more risk. So you can make a lot more, but you can also lose a lot more. And things didn't go so well from there. And... Then I started doing futures, which is what I'm doing now. And the cool thing about futures is you can get funded through a prop firm, which gives you like you can do an evaluation that if you pass it, they will give you money to trade with. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I, I passed an evaluation on November of last year. Um, they gave me six figures to trade with. And unfortunately, like literally three weeks ago, I think I lost it because I, it's not like you lose the money. They just take the account away from you. Like if you if you lose a certain amount of money, right. they just take the account from you. Obviously, they're not going to let you lose their money. Right. But uh, yeah, I lost that account a few weeks ago. Um, literally like user mistakes, like dumb mistake. Anywho, um, I'm starting I'm working on another one right now. I'm halfway done with it. And the cool thing about that is you're literally not risking your own money. You only pay for an evaluation. And um, if you pass the evaluation, they give you the account. And you can literally like withdraw money from the profits that you make with that account. Right. So depending on the prop firm, they're going to have a different profit split. Um, it can be like... 90 10 it can be 80 20 where like you keep 80 percent, they keep 20 um the one i'm with right now they do 90 10 so you get 90 percent of the profits they keep 10 so they're always making money you know because right, there's a lot of right. people who try to do them and they fail um and even when they win they still get 10 percent. so it's pretty cool that's fucking sick dude but dude it's like it's so cool because like i 
it's it's it was crazy feeling like the the feeling of making so much money in a day in minutes bro like consistently for a while it was crazy bro because it, it you feel on top of the world like can you imagine like just you you can like work for 10 minutes in the morning and then fuck off and do whatever you want <laughs> and dude i loved it honestly so that's why i kind of like i want to stick with it yeah and like i said it's two steps forward one step back but always going up yeah. you know crazy learning curve no that's fucking cool man uh i think it's a good thing to end on that's fucking awesome and uh, i hope you stick with it and i hope it keeps being profitable i mean obviously it's working out for you decently well yeah you, you fuck up here and there but yeah I uh, hope you stick with it, dude, because obviously you're doing well off of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not going too bad for you. Um, but this has been a lot of fun, dude. Yeah, I, I agree, sit down man. Again. This has been a lot of fun. Crazy was... seeing you again after, <laughs> like, dude, I think last time I saw you was, like, like right after my deployment. What was that, dude? Three? Uh, 2020. So, like, three two, two and a half years ago, three years ago. Yeah, Yeah, dude. three years ago now because it's, Fuck. yeah, February, March. Crazy, man. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, dude. This is a pleasure. <laughs> uh, I have wanted to have you on and do it in person and do it outside is a huge bonus. Like, this has been fucking great. I love this. This is great. And uh, yeah, man, it's been a fucking blast. Uh, yeah, great fucking time visiting. Um, thank you guys, everyone, for listening and watching as usual. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Boom. <laughs>